Let's continue now with our analogy comparing voltage and elevation. When talking about various elevations, we typically talk about the elevation of one point relative to another. Generally speaking, we define sea level as zero feet in elevation, and elevations above sea level are given positive values, and the elevations below sea level are typically given negative values. So for example, Mount Everest, the highest point on the Earth, has an, eleva an elevation of about 29,035 feet. That's 29,035 feet above sea level. Now, on, similarly, the elevation of the base station is 17,600 feet above sea level. So we can talk about the elevation of, one point, of a point relative to another point, being sea level, or to our reference, but we can also talk about the difference in elevation or the change in elevation. For example, if you're at the base station, how much more elevation must you climb to make it to the top? We can calculate that change in elevation or the elevation that's left by taking the elevation at the highest point, subtracting the elevation at the base station, and we find that there's 11,435 feet increase in elevation above the, above the base station. Similarly, if we wanted to know what the difference in elevation was or how much higher Mount Everest is above the lowest point on the Earth, which is the Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench, which measures 36,200 feet below sea level, or using this sign convention, its elevation would be negative 36,200 feet. If we wanted to find the change in elevation from the lowest point to the highest point, we would simply go the highest point of 29,035 feet minus the elevation at the lowest point, which is a negative 36,200 feet, and would find the difference in elevation from the highest point to the lowest point was 65,235 feet. The point here is that elevation is relative. It's relative to what? We could have also chosen to say, let's let our lowest elevation be zero. Under those circumstances, sea level would then be at an elevation of 36,200 feet, and the elevation of Everest would be 65,235 feet. In a similar way, voltage, or the potential within a circuit, is always measured relative to another reference, to another point. So for example, if we had a 9-volt battery, this terminal, marked with a positive sign, is said to be 9 volts higher than this terminal. We could also say that this terminal here is 9 volts lower than this terminal. And we can say that there's a 9-volt difference between the terminals. Now, where do voltages come from? Well, they're generated. Somehow we have to separate charge. It can be done chemically, as in a battery or in a solar, solar cell. It may be done mechanically by burning either oil or gas or natural gas, nuclear reactors, solar-generated steam. But then somehow you generate a, a typically generate steam to turn a turbine. And that turbine then, by turning electromagnets in electrical or in magnetic fields, will cause a charge separation that once again establishes a voltage. Regardless of how the voltage is generated, all voltage sources have two terminals. And the terminal at, or the voltage or the potential at one terminal will be higher than the voltage at the other terminal. That voltage difference is the size of the voltage source. This is typically the symbol that we use for batteries. It's meant to, imp to imply the parallel plates of a battery. And this over here, the plus and a minus sign, is a little more generic voltage source. It could be either DC like a battery or AC like a uh, alternating current generated uh, voltage generated by a generator in a turbine. So again, voltage is always measured between two points. When you're wanting to measure the voltage of a voltmeter, it takes two terminals. Typically, the red terminal is placed on the higher voltage, and the black terminal is placed on the reference voltage. But once again, you can measure the voltage 
between any two points in a circuit using a voltmeter. Let's go back to our elevation analogy. Here we have some sort of stepping place. We step up two feet, you step up another seven feet, you step up another three feet for a total of 12 feet. Now we can talk about the elevation here. We can talk about the elevation here. We can talk about the elevation anywhere once we define a reference. The obvious place for reference might very well be to choose this bottom position here and call that point right there elevation zero. Under those circumstances, then, this elevation here would be 12 volts. This elevation here would be 3 volts less than 12 volts. So right there, we could say that that's equal to 12 minus 3 volts, which is equal to, which is equal to 9. We could also say that it's equal to 0 volts there, plus 2, plus 7. So 0 plus 2 plus 7 equals 9. And make that an equal sign there also. And we can also talk about the volt, uh, not the voltage, the elevation difference between here and here. And there we might call it delta H is equal to 12, the elevation at that point minus the elevation at that point, which is 9, equals 3 feet difference. OK, so now what is a voltage analogy to it? Well, here we have a voltage source, a 12-volt battery. So the voltage here on this side of the battery, <coughs> excuse me, the voltage here on this side of the battery is 12 volts higher than the voltage here. And once again, we can talk about either climbing from 0 volts. And let's just go ahead and define this here as 0 volts. We can climb up 2 volts. We can climb up another 7 volts to give us the 9 volts here. We can climb up another 3 volts to get us to the 12 volts. And so this voltage here would be 12 volts, as we would see had we compared the voltage on this side of the battery to the voltage on this side of the battery. Now, once again, the voltages that we're talking about are relative to our reference of zero. But we can also talk about the voltage drop across here, which we know to be 3 volts. So if we started at 12 volts and dropped 3 volts, the voltage there relative to our reference would be 12 minus 3 equals 9 volts. Our voltage here at C would be this voltage here, 9 minus 7 volts equals 2 volts. So there's a 7 volt drop from here to here, which brings us from 9 volts down to 2 volts. And so our voltage at this point relative to our reference is 2 volts. Nomenclature-wise, we frequently will talk about the voltage at some point by using V and then a subscript to represent the voltage at, in this case, V sub A would be the voltage at A, which we now know to be 12 volts. V sub B, the voltage there we calculated to be 9 volts. V sub C, the voltage we calculated there to be 2 volts. All righty, reference voltage. Defining the reference is usually obvious, but nonetheless important. If you're using a battery-operated or a handheld device, generally speaking, the negative terminal of the battery will be your reference voltage. So if in this case, maybe it's a one and a half volt battery. The voltage here at the positive terminal would be 1.5 volts greater than the voltage there. On the other hand, when we're working with um, a system connected to the grid, the reference is defined in another way. Generally speaking, in a building tied to the grid, the reference will be defined by the ground or the potential of the ground at the building. And to establish that ground, they'll drive a copper rod down into the ground. Perhaps, depending upon the size of the building, they'll drive several copper rods around the building 
But the potential at ground then becomes the reference of zero volts. Thus, the concept of ground being zero is is a is the standard way of doing it when you're dealing with a grid. Over here in a battery operated system, it may not have anything at all to do with the ground. In fact, if it's a handheld cell phone, it has no reference to the ground at all, just to the voltage here, or just to the negative battery negative terminal of the battery. So on over here, the reference is ground, that becomes zero, and within your home, the voltages will either be 120 degrees above ground, I'm sorry, 120 volts above ground, or 120 volts below ground, and thus the combination of those two can give you a total of 240 volts difference between the lowest point and the highest point. So we now have a sense of this voltage this potential at some level relative to some other reference level. But what do we do with that? Well, generally speaking, or frequently I should say, not always, but frequently, we want to make current flow. Once again, our analogy of elevation makes good sense. When we're talking about the flow of electricity, or I'm sorry, the flow of water, water flows downhill. It flows from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. Similarly, in an electrical system, with a voltage present, our charged particles will flow from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. And when we talk about that, we're talking about electrical current. Current is measured for electrical current is measured in terms of coulombs per second, or another name for that is ampere. So a, an ampere is a coulomb per second, sometimes it's abbreviated as amps. And typically, the flow of water is gallons per minute or cubic feet per second or something like that. Now, generally speaking, we want our electrons to be flowing in some orderly way, not like water cascading down from the uh, mountains. I guess that would be like lightning cascading down from the, uh, from the clouds. But generally speaking, in electrical systems, we want the electron flow to be contained within some sort of a conduit. That conduit is called a conductor. And once again, we'll be talking about current flowing from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. And I should say, generally speaking, we'll be talking about current flowing from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Now, a historical note here. Back when they were doing the original experimentation with the flow of, of charge, they didn't understand the concept of an, of an atom with the positive charges being much, much larger than the negative charges, and the positive charges being bound within the nucleus. The experiments that they were doing did not allow them to differentiate between a positive charge flowing from a higher voltage to a lower voltage and a negative charge flowing from a lower voltage to a higher voltage. Well, Benjamin Franklin is typically the one that's credited with making the decision as to what are we going to talk about. Are we going to, are we going to choose positive charge flowing and have our conventional current in terms of ch positive charge, or do we choose negative charge? We were not, at that time, they were un un unable to distinguish between the two, and so he guessed. And unfortunately, he guessed positive charge flowing. And so we have this legacy, this convention, that describes current, or the current that we typically talk about, will be in terms of a positive charge flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. When in reality, what's happening is that the negative charged electrons, which are much smaller and are less tightly bound to the atom itself, and thus are free to flow, it's the negative charge that flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. It's a legacy that's been going on for well over 200 years. I don't think anybody's standing in line to change it. We'll just be used to that. And in this class, when we talk about current, we'll talk about conventional current flow, which will refer to positive charges flowing from the higher voltage or the positive terminal of our source, flowing then to the negative terminal or the lower 
voltage uh, terminal of our source.